In this video, I will talk about the unseen loneliness and despair of the victims and affected residents of the Great East Japan Earthquake Tsunami. In one instant on March 11, 2011, the lives of hundreds of thousands of people were forever changed for the very worst. Over 22,000 people perished on that day in the northeastern region of Japan we know as Tohoku. The tsunami also critically damaged the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant and triggered a nuclear meltdown that forced the evacuation of over 160,000 residents from the nearby town and area. The three disasters born out of a domino effect created a chain of circumstances that became the perfect storm of all disasters in the history of Japan. Hi, I'm Mike Matsuno, the man in Japan. My YouTube channel usually covers daily life in Japan. If you get anything out of the video, please subscribe and hit that like button. In today's video, I will focus on the unseen loneliness, the hidden pain, grief, and loss that many of the affected residents of the 311 Tohoku earthquake have experienced throughout the last 10 years. The 10th year Remembrance Memorial Anniversary was held on March 11, 2021. On this day, the people of the affected areas mourned the death and loss of loved ones. They cried and prayed for the souls who had perished in the disaster. All Japanese throughout Japan will always remember what they were doing and where they were on 3.11 after 2.46 p.m. As I watched the different NHK news and documentaries about the triple disaster and the affected areas in Tohoku, I could not help but feel that there was still so much more that was hidden, not shown, nor explained very well. I wanted to learn more about the local people and their personal stories and struggles, the humanity of the situation, how the residents had dealt with the loss, the pain, the grieving of the past 10 years. It seemed that for many affected residents, time has stood still for the last 10 years. During the week leading up to March 11, 2021, there were many news documentaries and TV feature shows on NHK and Japanese TV channels, but very few were created for or broadcasted to non-Japanese speaking people and people outside of Japan. NHK World, the English news channel of Japan, had featured a few human interest stories for 311. However, there were not that many and only people who have NHK World on cable could view these videos. After my two visits to the Tohoku area after the 311 disaster, I've always believed that it was so important for all people to see what happened and continues to happen in the last 10 years. What happened to the residents who did not die but survived the 311 disaster? What has transpired for them? How have they come to mourn, to grieve, and to move forward after 10 painful years? Since there was much interest about this subject, especially from non-Japanese and people outside of Japan, I decided to make this video and share two different survivor stories which were previously broadcasted on NHK and NHK World. Anbe Hiroshi's hometown was devastated by the nuclear accident. Living just seven kilometers away, he was forced to evacuate from Namie town in Fukushima to Tokyo. He never imagined he would be marking his 85th birthday still far from home. Anbe and his wife had to adjust to a small apartment in Tokyo. City life meant he had lost a sense of himself. <laughs> Even after the evacuation order was partly lifted, many people haven't returned because reconstruction has been so slow. Ambe felt he had no choice but to give up his ancestral grave in Namie and get a new one in Tokyo. He said he looks at passers-by every day from his window to distract himself from his loneliness. 
especially after his wife was hospitalized. In Arakawa Ward in Tokyo, where Ambe lives, 38 of around 120 original evacuees who moved there at the time of the disaster still live there. Sakuragi Hiroko, a representative from the Social Welfare Council, has been helping them for the last decade to keep them from feeling isolated, and the group has funded. But the coronavirus has made monthly gatherings and house visits impossible. Sakuragi has turned to weekly phone calls to check in. They are forced to live under restrictions due to the coronavirus, and that makes their health even worse on top of being evacuees. In other cases, they become weaker and weaker and finally die. So the pandemic has had a severe impact on elderly people. A professor who studies the experiences of evacuees agrees that the pandemic adds to the difficulties of the prolonged evacuation. I think their problems are becoming complicated and invisible. Thorough investigation should be done, and evacuees who are struggling should be identified, and support is needed to help address this. For many evacuees, life has been made even harder because of the pandemic, turning loneliness into a major battle to fight. Ambed's feeling of disconnection from his hometown, even after 10 years, is just one more lingering legacy of Japan's triple disaster. Like Mr. Hiroshi Ambe in the video, there were many residents of Tohoku affected areas who had to relocate due to the radiation and health risks of the Fukushima nuclear plant accident. Many of them were older senior citizens who presently live in faraway apartments where they have no close friends or relationships. Due to no fault of their own, they now live in isolated situations where they feel depressed, lost, and lonely. These evacuees are being unfairly hurt, some with double or triple or more like quadruple layers of jeopardy. First, they had to deal with the 311 earthquake and tsunami, many of them losing their homes and family members. Second, those in the vicinity of Fukushima were forced to evacuate their hometowns and homes. Third, Many were then relocated to places where they did not have a strong support system or family living close by, so they became lonely and sad and depressed. And yet, even on top of all that struggle and hardship, adding insult to injury, the fourth layer of jeopardy began one year ago with the coronavirus and the social distancing, which further isolated and prevented any interaction with others and a large number of these affected residents are older senior citizens. These senior residents should be in their golden years, comfortable and enjoying their daily lives, interacting among friends and family. Instead, many of them are isolated, alone, and have no purpose or passion to live for. Their lives have been completely turned upside down by the triple disaster and now the coronavirus pandemic literally a quadruple quagmire of pain and despair. Takeko, a survivor, lost her lifeline, the one person who she solely depended on. And her loss, pain, and grief, of course, has never gone away. Takeko's son, Kentaro, at 64 years old, was killed by the tsunami 10 years ago. Before the disaster, Takeko and Kentaro, mother and son, would travel together, and he always took really good care of her. All eight members from four generations of their family lived together on the family land. When the 311 earthquake hit, all members of Takeko's family evacuated to higher ground. However, Kentaro, who was in charge of the town's flood control gates, headed back towards the ocean to close the floodgates. Takeko first thought that Kentaro would return soon, so she sat by the heater and stayed up all night waiting for him to come home. He never returned. Even until today, she can never forget that moment in time. Like a nightmare, the once lively echoes of family voices and wonderful memories of her home were suddenly swallowed up forever by the tsunami. 
Then there was the Fukushima nuclear plant explosion. Due to the nuclear accident and radiation danger, Takeko could not stay in her hometown of Namie and had to evacuate. Different members of her family had to evacuate to outlying areas and they were separated from one another. After living six years in temporary evacuation housing, Takeko had to move and now lives alone in an apartment complex in Minami Soma City in Fukushima Prefecture. She's very lonely living there. Although she has lived there for three years, she doesn't know any of her neighbors or the people who live in the same complex. She said that people don't seem to come out of their apartments, so she has very little contact with anyone. She wonders how life can be like this. But there is one being's present that is very important to Takeko. Kentaro's 17-year-old dog named Mari. Kentaro brought the dog to comfort her when the 311 earthquake first hit. But Takeko is not allowed to have a dog in the Minami Soma apartment complex. So Mari is now staying with an NPO dog support care group in Gifu Prefecture. Mari is the one last treasure that was left to her by her son Kentaro. She really wanted to live together with Mari, but that wish did not come true. Her final wish is she still wants to live together with Mari. On this day, she was able to connect virtually with the MPO dog caretaker so she could see how Mari was doing. It's so nice to see Mari, she says. She's so cute. Takeko returned to see where her home was in her hometown of Namie. She asks, this is where my house was, right? The building and belongings have all been cleared away and are now overgrown with wild brush. This is where Takeko was married at 18 years old, where she worked hard, she raised Kentaro, and she lived with her grandchildren and great-grandchildren here in the family home. Takeko was born in 1930, so she's 90 years old. She said she lived through World War II and struggled to live after the war. Then 10 years ago, the nuclear plant meltdown happened and Kentaro was killed. And now the coronavirus. She now thinks that the year 1930 must be a very bad luck year to be born in. Takeko is thankful to at least have the evacuation apartment complex to live in. But on the other hand, when she thinks about this being the final place she will live before she dies, she of course longs for her hometown of Namie. Takeko has a message for Kentaro. Why did you die before me? Ten years of loneliness, sadness, and despair have passed. I have lived more than enough years now. When I see the sunset on the ocean, I remember the wonderful times we spent together. Life is filled with happy and unhappy moments. We can never take our life for granted. From heaven, please watch over me. Your mom. Since the March 11, 2011 earthquake, many affected people's lives have moved forward, especially younger people. However, there are those older residents who were forced to evacuate to other towns and cities. Some continue to wait to return to their hometown. Many are still dealing with the loneliness and isolation of the forced evacuation and living apart from their friends and family. These are all part of the hidden, unseen, and invisible injury, damage, and grief that the 311 triple disaster caused and was forced upon people who at no fault of their own ended up with such circumstances. Let us never forget the people who were so painfully affected in the Tohoku area. Let us all continue to support and visit the once affected areas that are now deemed safe to visit. We can stay in local hotels, we can eat at local restaurants, and continue to buy products such as rice, sake, fish, agricultural produce, Fukushima beef, and so on from that Tohoku area. Let us all let the residents of the disaster-stricken areas know that we do care and continue to hope and pray for their health, success, and happiness. Gambaro Tohoku, we will never forget you.